Next up on Howler for an hour, we have Wingspan. Wingspan is a card game focused on birds. Now, admittedly, it's not exactly something I would normally stream, but there's a few reasons I was interesting, interested in it. For one, as one of the uh, stream viewers just pointed out, it, it's a very clean looking game. It looks like a lot of thought was put into it, um, and it looks nice. It's just kind of chill. But beyond that, uh, the developers of Wingspan seem to be a bit tight with the developers of Niche, Strayfon Studios, who, if you just watched the recent Niche video I put out, you'll know that Stray Spawn Studios are, are the people who are responsible for single-handedly getting me my new mic that I've been using for the last few years, which is a far and away better upgrade than what I had before, and I am eternally thankful for that. It was a trade of mic for review, basically. Um, of Niche, that is. So anyways, since the Wingspan developers are tight with Niche, and in fact there's even a loyalty bonus for anybody who had Niche to get a 10% discount off of this game for a while, that isn't active anymore, just to let you know, but nonetheless, if the Wingspan devs are friends of Strayfon, then they're friends of mine too, as far as the way I look at it. So, let's check out their game. So let's see, custom game, Auto Automa? Clockwork birds? I'm interested, but let's do the tutorial. All right, one round, one of four, eight turns left. <clears throat> oh, another bird enthusiast. You're new to Wingspan? I'll show, it ar I'll show you around. I'm Robin, by the way. Of course your name's Robin. Why wouldn't it be? I'm a guardian of this wildlife preserve. As you probably know, this place is all about birds, but also about winning. You gotta win those birds. To win the game, you have to get the most victory points. The only way to do that is by playing birds. Before we start, you should get familiar with the structure of the game. This is a start your turn pop-up. Wingspan has played over four rounds. Fair enough. Right now it's your first turn of the first round. The first round you take eight turns. Second round is eight is seven turns. Third round is six turns. Fourth round is five turns, so there's less turns for each round. Yeah, one for your round and one for your turn. Okay. Oh yeah, less turns too. Okay, fair enough. On the right side of the screen, you can see how many turns you have left this round. Those end of round gold tiles, but don't worry about them right now. Now I'll show you what I can do with each turn. Press A to continue. Oh, can I? I guess I'll use the controller, sure. First you need to know how to navigate the habitats of your preserve. Okay. Look at the left side. That is the tree preserve. Forest. In the forest you can gain food for your birds. Now check out what you can do in the grassland. Okay. In grassland, you can lay eggs. Eggs are useful for playing birds. I imagine they would be. You also score one feather for each egg you have left to preserve at the end of the game. Now check the wetland. So we're gonna draw more birds. So wetlands obtain birds. Uh, grasslands make birds. And forest feed birds. Okay, so I have some cards of my player set up. Now let me show you the most important part of this game, birds. Look, there's a really impressive birds, actually. Look, we have the kill deer card. That is a famous bird that is known to murder deer even though they are 10 times their size, if not bigger. Very impressive bird, that one. No, that's not actually what the bird does, probably. <laughs> I don't even, I don't know. <laughs> kill deer, that's quite a name for a bird. It's the birds of your hand. Ah, the chickadee. I believe there's a variety of chickadee in Oregon that, while most birds migrate, uh, you know, to warmer weather during winter, this really tiny little chickadee that I forget the na species name of will not migrate. Even though it's really tiny and you think it would just die in the cold, it somehow manages to survive the winters. It like it's it's, it's it huddles up and stays warm. Anyways, that's the, that's my bird knowledge of the day. <laughs> Here you have habitat symbols, which show you where the bird can be played. Carolina chickadee, for example, can only be played in the forest. Okay, fair enough. Here's a Carolina chickadee's food cost. One worm or one wheat. In order to play Carolina chickadee, you need to spend either a seed or invertebrate. Okay. I don't know. I could play some invertebrates, but I'm not sure I have the spine to do that. 
but I'm Tish. <laughs> so remember next to that feather symbol is a bird's point value. Have this bird in your preserve. Gives you this many points at the end of the game. Okay. And here's her nest icon. They like they like to put things in tubes, like eggs in tubes. I don't know. Five types of nests. Carolina Chickadee has a cavity nest. Oh, it was a tube. I was right. <laughs> kind of. But their nests are platform, ground, bowl, and wild. Wild? Nests are used by some birds' powers, bonus cards, and the end of round goals. Okay. Wild Carnessa can be powerful because they match with any other nest type. Fair enough. Here's a bird's wingspan. Okay, is that important? Well, I mean, the game's called Wingspan, so I assume so. Wingspan is used by some birds' powers and bonus cards. You'll notice that when you need them. Which bird has the longest wingspan? The Killdeer has a long wingspan. Here's the most important thing. The, bear, the bird's special power! Okay, okay, one... Gain one seed from the supply and cash on this card. Hmm. Also, I noticed the birds have eggs on their cards, too. I assume that's the number of eggs they make or something? Hmm. There are three types of powers. When activated, when played, and once between turns. Fair enough. Caroline Chickadee has a when activated power. Okay. So, you know, three types of our playthrough. Look at the shape of these cards. They're like really long and the upper part's like wider than the lower part. Could, I wonder if these cards could be feasibly manufactured in real life. I mean, I'm sure they could, but I wonder how feasible that would be. The bottom of the card is where you have egg slots. That's where you lay eggs. Put the eggs in the egg slots. Each bird has a limited capacity for only eggs. Only three eggs per Carolina like chicken. Okay, play a bird. Steam tile is still niche. Uh, not sure if Hyper, did you change the stream title? If not, please do. Go to forest so you can get any food. Okay, sure. Lay eggs on birds. Lay eggs on birds, but you lay eggs from birds. <laughs> okay, well. Game free from bird feeder. The brown powers in this habitat will activate. Okay. <clears throat> brown powers, all right. How the right shows how much food you have. None. I have none. It's okay, Hyper. That's part of the process, but... Need either vertebrates or seeds. Yep. Here's the bird feeder. Did I show which food is currently available? So birds, seeds, berries, fish, rodents. Okay. Mm-hmm. Leftmost exposed slot, so how much food you can take. Okay, one. Okay. <clears throat> I can take one. I need to activate the habitat. Okay. Leftmost exposed slot will activate a habitat. Right? Yep. One ice cube. I'm just going to call that an ice cube because that's what it looks like. This ice cube marks the activated slots. Ah, okay. from the action pal to mark the leftmost exposed slot in the forest. Okay. On the left, the forest icon reminds you to activate the food game food action. Um, okay. Choose what you want, select the die you need, and press A. Um, okay. I mean, wouldn't it make more sense to grab the C slash invertebrate, because then it could be both? Pressing Y will confirm action. Can you see the no back symbol? It means the action you're about to do can't be undone. Anytime you see that, think twice before you act. That's a good indicator. I like that. Press B. When you press B, your ice cube will go back to the turns panel. You need... Yeah, C is a bit of like a chick D. Confirm your choice. Press Y. That's the first turn. Okay. So my ice cube for the first turn flew to the left and marked that you took the gain food action. I, I guess so. I wonder why that's... I'm kind of wondering why that's recorded. I guess just to keep track, I guess, of your progress in, through the game, I guess. Um, so we can now play the Carolina Chickadee. It needs... It's, it needs... Yeah. 
To play a bird, you need to cover its food cost. Which means you pay for it. Logical enough. Okay. Oh, cool. I just noticed that when you pull up a card, it plays that res the corresponding bird's uh, call. That's neat. I like that. Okay. Ice Cube has moved between the picture of your Carolina chickadee. Again, marking your turn. Oh, that counts another. Oh, I see. Every time an Ice Cube shows up, that just basically means, hey, you took a turn now doing that action. So, feeding the bird took a turn. Playing the bird took a turn. Basically, game food took a turn. Feeding the bird and playing it took a turn. Yeah, okay. On the left is the wind icon that you need to choose that you chose to play a bird. Okay. Look at this panel. All right, I'm looking at. This is the cost of the bird you want to play. Same one printed on the card. Okay. This is the suggested payment. If you had more food, you could change the type of food spent to play this card, but we won't do this for now. Fair enough. Confirm action of Y. And again, I can't undo it. So if I do... So basically, yeah. So the ice cream tells me, like, it's going to end a turn. It's going to take a turn. So there's another turn. Yep. Start the next turn. What about ice cubes to keep regenerating, though? You're... Yep. So the second turn flew to the left and marked that you took the playbird action. Okay, I see, I see. The Blue Jay is the next bird you want to play, but before you can do that, you need to collect food to pay for it. It needs... It needs... It needs a seed plus a Will of Fortune will. I'm not sure how a Blue Jay is going to eat a Will of Fortune will, but that's very impressive. Actually, that's too, that's too few... Too few voyages for that, but... You can cover the will fortune will in the food cost of any food item. Okay, that's what that means. That's interesting because when you can, uh, when it comes to nest type, there's several nest types, but you can, there's also the wild card type, which is a star. This is a wild card for food, but it's a will. I feel like it would have been sensible for those both to be stars, since they're both effectively wild cards, right? I don't know. It would have been nice if the two wild card because there's wild cards for nests and wild cards for food. It would have been nice if those two wild card symbols somehow matched in a way. They could have been different colors, of course, but it would be nice if they, yeah. Do you remember how to get food? Yeah. That's what slot will activate a habitat. Why? What about the other slots? This one has an egg symbol. The other one didn't. Your game food action improved because you played the... Oh, yeah. Game one seed from the supplying cash on this card. Yeah. <clears throat> Press A. Okay. Ice cubes in the second slot because the first slot is occupied by Carolina Chickadee. Uh, why did the slot activate with the... What? Okay. I don't quite understand the... Okay. So these are the food slots, but also the chickadee is taking up a slot. For some reason. Oh, is that because he's just adding one food to the thing? That actually might be why. I can the second slide of this bird feeder. In the habit, means you can take one food from the bird feeder. And the symbol card equals die means in the slot means that if you want, you can discard a card for one more food. Okay. So that's what that means. Mm -hmm. To play the blue jay, you need to seed in a food. Take the die of the. Choose the seed. Now press X to change one card for your hand. One more. Let's get rid of the bald eagle, yeah. He looks like he requires a lot of things we can't afford anyways. Press Y to confirm. Okay. You can take another one. So what did the blue what did the chickadee do in this situation? Oh! There's only five feeding slots. The chickadee actually took it, like the card of the chickadee over here, actually took up the slot that's normally here. So then that means we get to move the second slot instead, which is a better slot, I guess. Because yeah, if you look here, if you look here, every slot going left to right is slightly better. The first slot was just take a food. The second slot is take a food, but you can also take another food if you would discard a card. Next slot's take two food. Next slot's take two food, but you can also discard a card for a third food. And the next one's take three food. And the next one is take three food and also discard for a fourth if you want. So basically, the chickadee added to our food value in the sense that it took up the first slot so that we could move on to the second slot, which is a better slot. 
So basically, if we got another bird that helped with this, then we'd be forced into the third slot, which is a better yet slot, etc. I get it. The bird, basically the chickadee just lets us progress further along the slots. So. Those are the dice outside of the bird feeder. Okay. There are five total. Each that is taken out is marked here. Okay. <clears throat> What's that mean for us? Oh, the ones I removed. While well, playing, you may encounter birds to use this information. Oh, okay. Good to know. Now take the seed and confirm reaction. Okay. You see that ice cube moved to the Carolina chicken slot? Did it? I did. Ice cube always moves left and activates all birds when it activates power. Oh. Does that mean I get another food? It's not the end of your turn. Okay. So ice cubes now on the Carolina Chickadee, it's time for it to activate this turn. Right, right, now it gets to activate, yeah, so that's, not only did it push us forward a slot, but it also took the last slot so we can activate, yeah. All birds with an activated power give you an extra action each time you activate the habitat that bird inhabits. Okay, fair enough. So since he's in the forest, he activates his ability there. All your bird's powers are optional, it means you don't have to activate him if you don't want to. I won't skip. Every time you gain food, the Chickadee gains one seed. The chickadee is not taking a seed from the bird feeder, just found it somewhere else. It's resourceful. Okay. Did, did I do it? Last tree you cash food on the Carolina chickadee. It's, every cash food is worth one. The amount of food a bird has cash is marked on the bird card here. Okay. I was like gonna say like it didn't add to my food stores. So, let's, let's quickly see what gives points. Get points for plate, birds, laid eggs, cash, cashed food. Remember I told you you need eggs to play birds? You need to spend eggs to play birds starting for the second slot. The slots. See the, the egg symbol on top of them? I did notice that. Indicate how many eggs you need to spend in order to play a bird in the slot. Oh! That's what that means. Okay. Uh, okay. So you want to play the blue jay in forest. I need one egg. I need an egg. Okay, let's go get an egg. Get eggs to lay on the birds of your choice. Okay. There's a lot of colorful eggs down there. Love most exposed slot will activate a habitat. Now you have to choose where you want to lay your two eggs. Perform any of the four actions, playing a bird. Any food laying eggs or drawing cards, you can switch between habitats. You need to find birds to lay eggs on. So go back to the forest. So the icon on the panel shows grasslands, it means they activate the laying eggs action in the grassland. Did I? Oh, okay, that's true. I did. There's only one bird you can lay on, the Carolina Chickadee, because he's active. Yeah. Lay two eggs. Okay. Boop. Boop. Does that mean he can make a maximum of... Does that mean that this Chickadee can make a maximum of three eggs in, the, in a game? Because that's two out of three. Now you have everything you need to play the Blue Jay. Okay. Did we already lay the eggs? Are they there? I don't actually know. I'm not sure how this works, but eggs. Okay. It's worth noting that the bird, when the Carolina Chickadee got food, that food did not add to my food stores. It added to its own cash. If you want to play a bird on the second slot, you need to pay an egg. I shall pay an egg. With- Oh, I see! Ah! Oh, that marks it off. So that does mean the chickadee can only lay so many eggs. So it can also expend an egg for another bird, such as we just did. But that doesn't open the slot up. It marks it off. Oh, it does mark it off. Okay, it does remove it. Alright, cool. I guess that X was just to indicate what I'd be losing. So that means the chicken can make more eggs, I assume. Okay, my brain food actually has become stronger because they took up the two slots, so I move to the next slot. Need more cards. Okay, let's get more cards. Here you can draw more cards. Level most exposed slot will activate habitat. 
Anytime you draw a card, you can choose whether you want to draw one of the visible face up, face down, or face down. The back reminds you can do a drawing down and face down, down a card. Fair enough. Now for the sake of learning, I'll ask you to draw this kill deer. Yes, let's murder deer. We have a kill deer. Some birds have really weird names. Hmm. I just realized that a morning dove is actually spelled morning like you're in morning because somebody just died. I thought it was, I always thought it was spelled morning like morning, evening, afternoon. But no, it's it's spelled in a much more depressing way. I never noticed that. Huh. Morning dove. It doesn't sound as sunshiny now. <laughs> My life was a lie. <laughs> Alright, of. <laughs> Remember how to game food, right? Yep. Let's go to the forest and get some food. I need seed or invertebrate. Or bug. I'm just gonna need bug. Left most exposed, we'll activate habitat. Yep. I still don't under quite understand the ice cubes. <laughs> They were weirdly refilling at one point, and it kind of confused me. Yeah, I always thought Morning Bird was spelled like morning, like daybreak morning. Nope. Maybe there's two birds called different, both called Morning Birds with different spellings. Who knows? To the left of the ice cube, there are two birds of brown powers. I'm guessing that means... When they say brown powers, I'm assuming that means the border where it says when activated. That's brown there, so I assume that's what they mean by that. So you'll do three activations this turn. Game food, gain activate the blue jay's power, activate Caroline, keep the chickadee's power. Okay. After game food, ice cube will go to blue jay and activate it. After that. Oh, the ice cube marker! I just realized what it means now. It just means what like what is active in this current circumstance. Like what is currently being accessed, what is currently being It's just a marker letting you know what's going on. Like, if the marker's on the blue jay, that means what you're doing right now involves the blue jay, basically. I was very confused by that, but now I get it. And all of this using only one ice cube. Only one ice cube. Nice. The food you need is in the bird feeder. You can reset the bird feeder. Take all the dice aside and outside of the bird feeder and re-rolling them. Okay. You can re-roll any time all dice in the bird feeder show the same face. Oh, okay. So as long as they're all the same icon, you can re-roll them. Okay. Let's try that now. Remember, you can do. All right. Let's do it. How do we do it? I actually don't know. Oh, that right there. Yeah. Great. Remember, there's only one die in the bird feeder. You can also re-roll. Okay, fair enough. All the dice are taken out of the bird feeder. They will be re-rolled automatically at the end of the turn. Okay. Why do I have to take berries? Wouldn't it be more useful to take... Okay, whatever. Actually, it probably is good to take a variety. Blue Jays power similar to the Carolina chickadees. It can catch food. I still don't understand what cashy food does, but I assume it adds to my in end of game points. But the Jubilee's fire lets you choose between cashier or take it for itself. So yeah, that so the Blue Jay lets you actually choose. Chickadee just takes it for itself for points. Blue Jay lets you add it to your stores. I don't like the Carolina Chickadee. The Blue Jay takes the seed directly from the bird feeder. Ah, oh, okay, fair. Ah, so you want to leave a seed open for the Blue Jay in that situation, otherwise it can't take its ability. Otherwise its ability won't take effect, so... Fair enough. So the while well, the chickadee can't let you store the food and it has to cash it, it just gets it from anywhere. The blue jay, however, has to use the bird feeder. <clears throat> but also gives you more options. Alright. Take it. Let's take it. They can activate the Carolina Chickadee's power. I mean, no reason not to, really. Why would you want? Why would you not want to cash? Especially since it doesn't grab from the bird feeder. There we go. Good night, Tail Lightning. All right, one turn left for this round. For a finish, let me show you your opponent. Oh no, it's a cat. This is your opponent. It's a cat. And this is you. That is me. Take a look at their habitats. Take a peek at their opponent's habitats, you need to press RT. Okay. 
I find a cat in a... It looks like a smoky bear, but a cat. <laughs> Bard Owl. This guy is a predator. It's a Bard Owl. Hmm. That's why it needs a mice. This Bard Owl will hunt each time your opponent activates his bird. Look at a card from the deck. If under 75 centimeters... Wingspan. Tuck it behind this bird, if not discard. Oh, it can kill. Ha! Ah. It can go after birds, can it? I assume. Yeah, if it succeeds, the bird card will be tucked under this predator. Every tucked card is worth one feather. So, it's just in cash birds that are under a certain size. Let you try to use this predator. Benefits. But it also requires mice, which might be hard to get? I don't know. Okay, now we've got food to play the kill deer for the habitats they can be played in. Okay. Oh, you have to play them within those habitats. Oh, yeah, that makes sense, because that means... Right. Because, like, if I were to play them in the wildlands, that means that we would advance the egg counter thing, and then we'd have the two eggs plus a wild card for an egg, too. But we also play them in the habitat here to advance the habitat where we can now spit an egg to get a second card. Yeah, okay. I get I get how the, I get the flow of this. This is kind of interesting. You basically want to put your birds into the habitats to advance what you can do with those habitats, make it to progress what you can do within that habitat basically. Okay. So yeah, it can discard an egg to draw two cards as well. Neat. Alright, confirm. This was your first round. Those are the end round goals. Let's see. Round one, bird in forest is the goal. So I guess because I put two birds of a value of four feathers into the forest, and he put one bird with a value of one feather into the forest, I guess that means I win in that particular round's goal. The second round requires, let's see, uh, boldness birds with eggs. So basically, birds that want, want the bull nest have eggs. That That's what you're aiming for for second round. Third round, you're aiming for eggs in the, in the grasslands, just more eggs than the opponent in the grasslands. And then round four, just the total number of birds. Okay, I get this now. Press, press R and... Okay. Yeah. Count the whole number of birds you currently have in the specific habitat role. Count the number of birds with the specific nest type. Nest type that have at least one egg. At least one egg. Each bird counts just once regardless of how many eggs it has. Ah, so you should spread eggs around if you can. Eggs for everyone. And star nest counts towards a goal because they're wild cards. The total number of eggs your birds have laid in the specific habitat row, multiple eggs of one bird each count. Okay, the eggs do- all eggs count in that case. Uh, number of birds you've played- okay, yeah. This makes pretty good sense, then. Each round has a randomly chosen task you can fulfill to gain extra feathers. Okay, so extra points can be gained if you meet the goal. If you don't meet any credits at all, you get a zero. If you and your opponent tie, the points are divided by the number of players and rounded down. And since I won, I got the most. I'm guessing the more players there are, the more it dulls around. So let's start with what I've learned. Okay, let's do that. Took eight turns of the first round. I guess so. There's less rounds in each... There's less turns in each round. So one less each. I know how to do all those things. You can score points. Okay, yeah, so let's go over that. So playing birds, laying eggs, caching food, tucking cards, and end of round goals. Tucking cards is basically like caching food, except for you're tashing the birds. And then... Okay. Caching food and tucking cards are similar, they just require different steps. I want egg. Hyper. Go to the grasslands, you can add to my score. <laughs> Lay the egg. <laughs> you also know they have an opponent. I can show you more of that stuff in the second round. Okay. Seven turns, yep. Close the screen, sure. Show you something important about drawing cards, but to do that you need more eggies. Yes, I will lay more eggs, don't you worry. If I choose a bird or birds that you want to lay eggs and and confirm action. Uh okay. Do I I 
I don't seem to have any birds right now, though. Uh, do I? Oh, wait, no, I have to. Oh, right, okay. Oh, right, you confirm it, and then you move to the other habitats. Oh, yeah, because there's multiple. So, I mean, I guess I'm giving it a choice here. They actually, no, they're letting me pick, so let me think. Blue Jay doesn't have much egg potential. I mean, two eggs is okay, but... Killdeer has a special attribute when they discard eggs. Maybe I should use the Killdeer. Because then we can get more cards. The cards in the water have changed. Good. How do you know that? Oh yeah, they have. Stoic Egret. Bell's Vireo. And Barn Swallow. For each round, all the face-up cards will be replaced by new ones. Fair enough. If you want specific cards and the round is coming to an end, you'll lose the opportunity to draw what you want in the next round. Fair enough. Because you have a kill deer that cover the first slot, you can activate the water. Use the egg for card exchange. Oh, he doesn't need to have eggs to do the... Well, whatever. It's still fine for him to have eggs. Let's make use of exchange. The left of the slot will activate a habitat. Hold on a second. Oh, I should have, I should have placed eggs in the blue jay, but I can still do so. The reason I should place eggs in the blue jay is because he has the bull nest, meaning that there's an objective for that. So I want to, I want to make sure the blue jay gets some eggs. Squishy egg. <laughs> okay. So I can exchange an egg for a card. You have to draw one additional card. This was a good start, though. And then accept. Okay, now choose two face-up and accept your decision. All right. <clears throat> well, let's see. Well, I guess I would like the ones with wild card nests, because they would be useful. There we go. Now activate the kill deer. Discard one egg to draw two cards. Yes. I just wish we could know the habits of another bird with egg laid so we can spin it for two additional cards. Uh, I, I don't, though, so. <laughs> wait, you can. Wait, you can discard more than one egg? I thought it was just one. Interesting. Well, regardless. So this is a fish and invertebrates. Okay. Roll dice on the bird feeder if there are any fish. Gain one fish and cash it in this card. Okay. Interesting. So that would be useful once the bird feeder is pretty empty. Because then he would roll more dice and have more of a chance at that. You faced up cards haven't been replaced yet. They'll be replaced when you face this turn. Okay. Well, the face down card of the simple. If you draw a face down card, you will. Yep, I know that. Draw one face down card. Accept your decision. But I want the snowy egret. Oh, I see. I get to pick two. I got a black vulture. <laughs> Snow Eager makes a funny noise. <laughs> I'd like you to look at your new cards. I'm trying to. Bard Swallow. Um, when activated power, <clears throat> lets you create a flock. Okay. Tuck a card from, the, from your hand behind this bird. If you do, draw one card. Oh, trade a card for a card? Interesting. Could cycle your cards that way. And it has a feather, so sounds pretty useful. Snow Egret. It's a predator. Evil symbol. Hunts using dice that are outside of the bird feeder. Yep. You have to roll dice, and if at least one shows a fish, the hunt was successful. And a Bell's Vireo and a, Bell's Vi Vireo and a Black Vulture. Bell's Vireo is a really odd name. <clears throat> so when played... So when I place it down onto the habit one of the habitats... Yeah, only one power to activate. Draw two new bonus cards and keep one. Fair enough. Uh-huh. Okay. Alright, I want to look at my cards. Hold on. Bell's Vireo. And then once between t between turns, when another player's uh, predator succeeds, gain one die from the bird feeder. Ha! Ha! That's actually pretty good. I like that. Good old scavengers. Take just taking a bit of their own, taking a bit of their spoils, basically. 
Okay. Cool. Um, can I egg? I cannot egg at this time. All right. Yeah, this game kind of works just within three different like fields where different things happen. It makes sense. It's a little complex, but it's not too bad. Let most exposed slot will activate a habitat. Take the invertebrate. Right. Okay. Because there's only one die of the bird feeder, you can play. You, you can reroll all five dice. What? What? What about? Okay. I was gonna say like, why can't? I, why can't I take the seed though? That also is there. Oh, because it wants me to reroll for another invertebrate, so I can play the bells Vero. Fair enough. Well, no invertebrate. But there's a way. If you play a bird, you can spend two food items to say you're one of another food item. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. I take fish because fish are needed for the other other fella. I forgot his name already. <laughs> um, take seed using Blue Jay's power. Yep. And, <clears throat> yep, and cash another seed on the chickadee. They're good at hoarding, I guess. I've laid eggs. Good to know, Ponit. I'm glad to know this. Please update your Instagram to let me know you laid eggs. <laughs> Actually, it is good to know what they're doing. An egg. Now, birds in the, yep, and the first slot is empty. It means you don't have to pay an extra egg to play a bird. Oh. Okay, fair enough. Play the bells here. Well, okay. I should wait. Well, I guess eight works too. He's a wild card. Yeah, that's fine. Notice the exclamation. It means the food you have doesn't match the bird's food cost. Yep. But it's okay. I'll smash this seed and bury it together until it turns into a worm. Ah, okay. So draw two new bottle cards and keep one. All right. And keep one of them, but you have to discard the other. You gain more feathers at the end of the game if you fill the requirements specified on these cards. There's no punishment for failing. Look at the nest box builder. Is where nests come in handy. Okay, have a better view of the cards. You can hide this interface by pressing L. Okay, fair enough. Oh. What? Okay, just pull it. I, I, oh, okay. So when you're given the choice of a bonus card, you can just press the trick. You can press the uh, left analog stick in to hide it temporarily and look around. You'll play the back falter in forest later, so I'd advise taking the forester bonus card. Okay. So, nest box builder, birds with the, the, uh, yeah, the two nests, the kind of crevice nests. Four to five birds give you four, six plus birds give you seven. Oh, that requires quite a bit, though. Requires quite a, quite a few. Forester, birds can only live in the forest. Three to four birds, four, five birds, eight. I wonder what the last little bit is. Two birds, zero feathers? Oh, oh, it's telling me my current number, I guess. Yeah, obviously, Forester is a closer uh, to gain objective, so. Technically, has better profit, too. So, I guess it's just in our inventory now. I've laid eggs. Good for you. Look at the Black Vulture. It has once between turns power. <clears throat> you can activate it once between turns power only when your opponent does something specified in the power description. Yep. Between each of my turns. That's pretty good, actually. If they're hunted a lot, that's very beneficial. Black Vulture's food cost. I didn't even notice that, but it's, it's nothing. It doesn't eat. It is, in fact, self-sufficient. So you can just play it. You have enough eggs. It does require an egg? Okay. Yeah, it does. Well, the slot requires an egg, so... There we go. And I can pay the zero cost. Mm -hmm. 
And I guess we'll spend the one egg. Or, yeah. The one single egg to make it work. There we go. Thank you, so your opponent's successful hunts. So every time they hunt, now I benefit. So that's that's a good card to get out early, I'd say. Of course, it makes if the opponent's not using predators, it's not very useful, but... What's the ice cube on the panel? There's no ice cube on the panel because this power is once between turns. Yep. I see. There's no ice cube in the lower right interface because it's a between turns thing. I get it. How did I get a berry? Okay, so a barred owl did a predator hunt, and then I got a berry out of it? Okay. Curious. I'm gonna show you one more thing before the tutorial, so go to the grass. Leftmost exposed slot will activate half that. Yep. I'd like you to press X. Why? Oh, let's see here. So, this, uh, two eggs plus... Well, okay, I see. I think I actually don't see. But if I hit this, it turns that into an egg, whatever that means. You can now spend one food the- oh, spend a food, right. That's what that symbol means. That's the food symbol. I actually, I just understood why that five colored circle is a food symbol. Those five colors match the five colors of food. Red for berries, blue for fish, green for bugs, gray for rodents, and brown for seeds. So that makes a little more sense. And also, it, oh, it's supposed to represent the- it's supposed to represent the food groups. That's what that symbol is representing. It's representing food groups. Also, hi there, pillows. So I don't understand why a star represents that that bird can lay, can work with any nest, though. I'm not really sure what that's up, up, up about. Um, you now spend one food that you have to lay additional egg. Okay, I'm gonna spend the berry I just got. And lay three eggs on the birds you want. Well, that's a pretty easy one, because you want to lay them on the ones that have bull. And you want to lay them on the... yeah. Bull wild card would be good for the bonus. There we go. Still one turn. I think I've taught you all I know. Let me show what you can do. In your turn you can play... yep. During your playthrough, you can check the current end of goals, round of goals, and score, and your overall score. Check your score press. Oh. There he is. Do I see how many points your opponents have already scored in all the end of goal? Yep. The bomb you have points for, birds, bows, cards, and blah, 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 blah. Okay. Current total score is 26. Fair enough. Okay, what what's their current total score? Can I see that? I guess not. One final thing you could do. I just realized she has tons of grass right here. <laughs> she has one with the forest. Anytime you can access general overview of your habitats. Press R to enable the overview. Oh. Yeah, wait. Oh, up. Up on the R stick. Okay. <laughs> the R displays all your habitats, birds. You gotta see which birds are available in the wetland and what food is currently inside the bird feeder. Huh. That's a lot of... I mean, that's good. That's good. I probably just personally visited, but that's nice to see. You face your random rounds it out if you want. Hope you'll successfully attract many birds to your habitats. Good luck. Well, I'm, all, I'm on my own now. I think I get I think I get the idea of the game, so... Let's see. So... Now that I have control... I'd really like to play the Snowy Egret, because the... The bird feeder is very empty, and it would be very beneficial. So how do I... He need, But he requires a fish, which actually I can play. So where do I want to put him? Well, okay, and that's actually not a, even a question, because he only goes in the water, apparently. Alright, let's let's let's, uh, let's go ahead and play him. Yeah. Let's do that. Cost, fish. Fair enough. Also, when activated. So, when activated... I wonder when, when activated works for that, exactly. I guess when I'm doing the feeding process, I suppose. I 
We draw cards in this case, yeah. Oh, I, I don't quite have enough, do I? Oh, he requires... Right, he requires two. Sorry, whenever I see a slash symbol, I think it means this or that, but it's actually this and that, so I can't actually pay, I actually, can't actually do him right now. We'll hold off on him, then. Actually, maybe this would be a good time to... It's or? Then why is it not letting me... Yeah, I would think so, but why is it not letting me... Oh, I actually hit change. There we go, I'm done. But I also gotta spin an egg, which I have one, so that's fine. Actually, I got multiple. Spend right there, because I think... I believe one of the both objectives requires me to have any bowl or wildcard nest birds with at least one egg. So if I spin for the blue jade, that's the best way to do it. Or do I have to spend two eggs? No, I just have to spin one. Yeah, it'll do. Snowy egret. In the 1880s, these birds' wispy plumes were literally worth their weight in gold. See? Like I said, that was worth points, <laughs> so. Huh, also, we're getting a little description of the birds now, I guess. Neat. Alright, cool. So, the next objective. Oh, what was the next objective? Eggs in the grass. Okay, just eggs in the grass. <laughs> We need to get some eggs up in here. So we need to we need to put some birds here when when possible. So what do we want to do? I feel like we want to get some food. Well, actually, I would like to. Gain fruit from bird feeder, then brown parasites habitat will activate. Oh, actually, it's kind of a bad time. Yeah, let's get some food. We can also spend a card to get more food. I would like to not spend a card. In this case, so uh, let's go ahead and grab. Should I go ahead and just kind of reroll and then, like, should I still grab this food? I'm kind of wondering. Or can I just can I reroll and then grab food? Am I allowed to do it that way? That's one thing I didn't actually learn. Let's find out. Nothing wants berries. Let's just reroll. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So, we need to have an invertebrate. I'll grab one of those. And I also would like to have... Uh, let's actually... Hold on. How do I lower the interface so I can see behind it? I think there was a button for that. Whoa, what? Oh, um, okay. Guess we're seeing what he's doing. I, uh, there's a way to move the display. Oh, right. Uh, there. Okay, now I can look at the... I wanted to look at the cards at the bottom there. So we see... Oh, wow. Look at that northern bob white. Holy shit. Damn thing requires three seeds. Red shoulder hawk requires a, a mousy mouse. Pairing Fal falcon does too. Well, we want to display... We want to, we want to try to put cards into the fields. Barn Swallow alone will probably do a, a good job at that, but if we can display, if we can... Huh. Well, the feeder doesn't have rodents, so... That being said, we could grab two random food and feed the Red Shoulder Hawk. But he doesn't get display it. He doesn't go to the grasslands, so... Actually, we probably should just focus on the Barn Swallow, the Bell's Vero, and just giving them a bunch of eggs, probably. What's their mission again? Yeah. Egg, just eggs in the... Yeah. That's what I thought. Okay. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and grab a seed. I guess. Now, we could exchange a card, but I don't think I want to. Cards we have are useful. All right, do we want to gain one for the bird feeder? Yeah, probably. Okay, and then yeah, cash the thing. Sure. Okay. Five turns left. He just he threw down a roadrunner. Interesting. 
All right, so I'm thinking we play the barn swallow here. Yep. Good. We have to spin an egg, but that's fine. We'll get it back in a minute. Also, I'll, I'll play it from the blue jay, obviously. So that, that's less of a concern. We're looking for eggs in the field, so if we spin an egg in the forest, that's perfectly all right. Barn swallow. Barn swallows once nested in caves, but now favor human-made structures. Hmm. So now that we've done that, I'm going to go ahead and get some eggies. And we're just going to lay a, lay a bunch of eggies. There. Uh... Oh, uh, right. I don't want to tuck that. Thank you. Can I just not? There we go. I mean, tucking cards are nice, but that wasn't the focus right now. <laughs> Choose food for the beer. Oh, thank you. Um, I will take another... Well, let's see what's down here, actually. Right. I'm going to take a... Oh, we have enough seeds, actually. That's good. Means we can actually, uh... Hmm, what do we want to do this turn? Good food whenever opponent does, yeah. Yeah, Vulture's really sweet. Actually, pretty good. Okay, we could get a card. Or we could get some more food. How many turns we got left? In this round. Actually, kind of lost track of that information. Where do I look that up again? Wait, R. No, not to that. Three turns left. Right. I just want to make sure I grab the Northern Bob White. Actually, if I grab it now and place it, I'm going to get a lot more cards down. I could get a lot more eggs going. Let's see. If I got it now, that'd be one turn. Then I could get food. Or then I could place it. That'd be another turn. And get some eggs. And then I get some food. I can do that all in three turns. So it's really dependent on what order I want to do it. Do I want to get the Bob White now? That actually, no, I do. Because we're going to have another draw a card situation. And if it would be nice if we had an extra card at that point, you know? Now, the problem is it's going to cost us an egg. But I think in the long run, it's going to be worth it. So. So let's go ahead and grab that guy. And we're also going to just grab... I'll go ahead and grab a random because I'm kind of curious what it'll end up should be shown. Maybe it'll be something even more useful. Caspin Sparrow. Caspin Sparrow. Hmm. Interesting. Alright, what do we have here? Uh, dice outside bird feeder. Yeah, let's see if we get a fish. Oh, we got a fish. We got a fish on the birdie. Good. And then we must discard an egg, but that's fine. Like I said, temporarily this will be bad, but in the long run it'll be fine. All right. Oh wait, whoops. Just occurred to me. Did I just grab two cards? You're out of cards. Oh. I think I accidentally grabbed another card, didn't I? I'm a derp. Oh wait, maybe I'm not a derp. No, I think I am a derp. I accidentally uh, drew more cards, didn't I? Oh well. All right, I'll just ride with this. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, basically, I accidentally—I uh, didn't mean—I didn't mean to have my turn in that way. I guess you could say. That's fine, though. Actually, wait. No, I still have. I'm confused. Three, two, three, two, three. The number was bouncing around. Okay, whatever. I think I'm still good, actually. Uh, let's go ahead and play the... Hmm. That's a good question, actually. What 
Oops, actually, hold on. How do I back out of this menu? Oh, I don't, but I can do this. There we go. Uh, so, wait, three to four birds. Four. Yeah, that's good. All right, um... So I wanna, I wanna probably drop some, yeah, this is actually good, I have an idea. I, I like, I like the Swainson Hawk. This is like, yay! <laughs> kind of a gay. <laughs> um, let's see here. Let's play the... I guess it'd be the most efficient to play the cast of the Sparrow, but he only has two eggs he can do. Holy crap, you can lay a ton of eggs, buddy. When activated, lay one egg on... Okay, well, yeah, you're obviously gonna be the one I lay, I put here, because... Yeah. He's very egg-focused. <laughs> That's fine. This will benefit me in the long run. Bob White. Bob Whites are prolific breeders, but their numbers are in decline. Oh, I can get a I can get a rodent if I want. Um, I'm gonna get. You know what? Sure. You know what? Why not? Let's get a rodent. One turn left. Now let's get some eggs if I can. I can also spend two food, or a food on... Yeah, that's fine. I will spend... Actually, wait, hold on. Would I rather have the Swanson's Hawk, or would I rather have the Pillet of Woodpecker? Well, the next round requires just total birds, so... Um, all players lay one egg on any... That bird. You may lay additional egg on one bird. How many of those birds do I have? None. But then again, I got two wildcard birds, and they count for that, too. And then when we have her activate, we can also do that and look behind the deck for... Yeah. It's under 75 centimeters. So do I want... To, well, here's the question. Do I want tuck cards behind my predator? Or do I want to get more eggs? Like, in the long run. I mean, past this, past this set of rounds, I mean. Then again, he might immediately activate. If... Yeah, let me think. Anyways, okay. Let's, let's say some eggs. I'm just thinking of long term, you know? Because, like, I can spin another... I can spin another... Um, I can spend another food, so I was just thinking, like, what do I care more about? I think I care more about eggs, so I'm gonna spend the mouse. Well, actually, the fish. The fish is not useful to me right now. Alright, there we go. Hello, manly pup. What's your name? Yes, do it. Another egg. Tuck card from hand. Yeah, let's see. Oh, I should play him. More eggs. As much as I love the Swayze to talk, like, yay! <laughs> I might get rid of him, actually. <laughs> I'm just gonna remove him. Yeah. Wait, what? Did that work? This is effectively a discard for points, yeah. I'm just, I'm just gonna discard the talk. Yay! Choose a card. Why am I choosing a card? Alright, oh, because I can this because I can. Uh let's see. <clears throat> I will take, play another card to the same habitat, pay its normal cost. Well, that sounds useful for getting birds out there. I'll take him. Mm. 
Waha! Smash that goal. Alright, so this one's just Toll Bird, so. Red Eye Viria might help us out with that. Kinda looks creepy, that eye. Alright, Red Eye Viria, what do you require? You require. <clears throat> play another bird at the same habitat, pays normal cost. So I basically play two cards at the same time, but it will cost both of them. I think we need to get some food, then. Probably should see what's in the marsh, though. Let's see. Ah, oh, the Eastern Bluebird can do the same thing. Alright, good. Good to know. If I could get two berries and two invertebrates, I'd be good. But we'll see. Though, actually, no, actually, let's get it. Oh, I know what I'll do. And we will spin a card for this. We're going to keep the Red Eye Vireo around. We're also going to keep the Cast and Sparrow. We're going to get rid of the Pillated Woodpecker. I have a plan. Wait, hold on. Oh, wait, no, I have to keep. But, mm, that's troublesome. I need the woodpecker because he can put his place in the forest. The sparrow would be useful to me, but he can't. He can't just play into the forest, so we'll have to get rid of the cast of sparrow. My goal is to fill up the forest. So the woodpecker would be the best bet for that. Unless, of course. Well. The dark eye jungle could be good, too. But I'd have to play around into that. And then have to spin an egg for that. I do have eggs, though. So do I want to work with a woodpecker, or do I want to get the dark eyed Junko down there? Because he requires a seed and invertebrate. It would be easier to pull off. Because remember, I can acquire seeds using the blue jay. The forester card? You can play this? Oh, you can. Well, I want to wait till I have five birds. I only have three as well, so... Note, if I hold on to that and play a little bit later, it's better. Um... I think it'd probably be better just to work on the woodpecker. Let's go ahead and just, uh... Let's go ahead and see what we get. Okay, so I would like... The berry would be good. And the x-ray invertebrate would be good, too. And... There isn't one, so... But I can re-roll using him. Ooh, interesting. Which actually kind of came in handy. Yeah, I may as well... Do I want to take that? Think about it. That's one more, that's one more die that can roll invertebrate. I kind of don't want to take that, actually. Oh, I have to. It's not, it's not a choice. Oh, well, I might as well take it then. And then I can take another, oh, here we go, here we go. The vulture, the vulture is very handy. Right, we'll take a berry. There we go. Now we're set up well. Okay, let's see. Now we can play, yeah, this guy, and then play another one of the same same habitat as well. Hopefully I have enough eggs. Do I have enough? I should probably double check, actually. That will require a total of, what? Just two eggs? Is that two eggs or? Well, I got enough eggs, so. Yeah. That'll do. And actually, I misread the food cost, so I definitely have plenty of eggs. Okay. Red-eyed vireo. Near-sighted vireos flock with other birds that make noise if predators are around. Well, all birds make noise. How is that any different from most birds? All right. There we go. Birds use these birds' old nests and glean bugs where they've been feeding. Cool. Uh, food. What do I want? I mean... 
Look, the objective is just to lay down as many birds as possible in a short period of time, so I guess I may as well just... Let's consider here, actually. Um, anything cheap here? No, no, those are all very expensive, but... Invertebrate and seed for that one. Well, this is even a rodent. That one could use a rodent, but it also requires a fish. I have no fish right now. But I might have a fish in a minute. I could grab this fish here. And then I would just need... I'm just thinking, hold on. I need another worm. That's pretty easy to get. I might be able to play two birds if I play my cards right. <laughs> then again, I don't know that... Well, let's, just, let's give it a shot. Oh wait, I got two! Yeah, no, I got one. Never mind. For some reason, I thought I was getting two food. Got very excited. Alright, so... Don't forget about your Forester card. I will not forget about my Forester card. I will now play it. I will now play it. I will now hold on to it because I don't think I can play it. I think you just... I don't know. I think you just wait till the end of the game and it counts. Because I can't seem to do anything with it. Yeah, I think it's just a hold thing, yeah. Alright, let's, uh, let's play the, yeah, cast a sparrow. He, he'll play a bird. I can play an egg. Uh, that, and that. Pay, pay. Spin an egg. Yep, that's fine. Ornithologist John Casson died from years of handling arsenic preserved birds. But that's 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 a really random fact for that bird, but okay. So you know this bird, you know some guy died because there was arsenic on the bird and then he died. It's not really a bird fact, it's more of a somebody died because of this bird fact. <laughs> Alright. I get to choose a food though. Um let's see. Again, what was I aiming for? The Junko, I guess? Yeah, the Junko will do. Or the Eastern Bluebird? What do I want more? Well, actually, I can get a seed really easily. So I probably should just go for the invertebrate, yeah. Okay. I don't think I can play another bird, but let, let's see. I don't think I can, Maybe I should just make eggs. Maybe I... Yeah, I think I should just make eggs at this point. That's probably the best way I can earn points right now. Plus, we can activate more eggs yet by the, you know, watch. When activate, lay one egg on a bird. When activate, lay eggs on its own itself. Yep. Oh, I have to tuck a card. Oh no, do not tuck that card. Mm -hmm. Tucking cards is good, but not in this situation. Choose a for food. Uh, okay. There is no berry, obnoxiously, but there is a seed, which actually might work too. Vulture's really handy. This is literally the last turn. I can't grab a bird and make eggs at the same time, so I gotta choose one. I'm gonna choose eggs, because eggs. If I had one more turn, I could also play with another bird, but... Alright, so we're just gonna start putting some eggs down. Eggs. 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 Do not tuck card. 
eggs. Yeah, smash that goal. It's actually, I, I, when I first started getting into this, I thought to myself that this sounded a little overly complicated, but actually it makes a lot of sense when you start playing and getting into the rhythm. Amount of birds, bonus amount of cards, end of round goals, fucking smash that. Eggs, I have, fuck you, I have more. How dare you have more eggs than me? I am the egg master. Still. <laughs> By the pricking of my thumb, something wing it. By the pricking of my thumb, something wing it, wing it comes. Achievement unlocked. How dare he have more eggs than me? Oh well. <laughs> uh, sure. Preserve, I preserve archive. Oh, okay, I see. Herbs. Ah, any card I, I got, I assume, I get to look at now? That's cool. How many birds are there? Looks like this, looks, this, this seems to be a rather large Pokedex. I assume if I click them, I could probably hear... Northern Bobwhite. Bobwhites are prolific breeders, but their numbers are in decline. They need to breed harder, then. <laughs> Bells Virio. John Graham Bell taught taxidermy to future U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt. That's nice. How does that have to do with the Bells Virio? <laughs> These facts are kind of curious sometimes. Yeah, that, that was the Castle Sparrow fact. Blue Jay. Blue Jays can carry up to five acorns and will store hundreds for winter. I mean, store... Carry up to five acorns like in his stomach? It's quite a few acorns for their size. Well, I want to find the... Yeah, you. Carolina Chickadee. Chickadees hide seeds and can remember thousands of hiding places. Some birds are really smart. Killdeer. Why is it named that? Killdeer. Killdeers will fake a broken wing to lure predators from their nests. That's true. I've seen, I've seen birds do that before. So you can actually play online as well. I also just play in general. Custom game. So, before we quit though, what is up with Atomina? Atoma? I, I'm kind of curious. Uh. Uh. Huh. What? Hold on, wait. Player portrait. Okay. Huh. Human. Atama, easy. Oh, Atama means computer controlled, I guess. Oh, I can also just make the AI. Oh, that's cool. Oh, I was gonna say, maybe you can just have an automatic game. Watch the AI play. No, you have to have other. So you can actually have a lot more than one person, too. Which makes sense. So that's Atomna easy. That's AI easy. What is the difference between Atomna and... I don't know. Let's find out, I guess. There's AI and then there's Atoma. And I'm just like, what's that mean? They played a strict set of rules? Oh. I am a purple badger. I'm not gonna keep playing. Oh, what the hell? This wild turkey does absolutely nothing. That's true. The only thing that a turkey is good at is being food for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Also, they're really exp look how expensive the wild turkey is for having absolutely no goal, nothing they do. Oh yeah, turkeys and eight. Well, they are worth a lot because they're so because the, they're delicious. Oh you oh look when you start a game you have a choice. I didn't even realize this. You could choose between starting with a bunch of food. Or starting with some birdos. Like, honestly, you want to start the game with any sort of bird that does like a when another player does hunting, then you get this, like, because that's really beneficial. When played, gain three from the supply. That's really good too. If there's that much.
And the condor is free. I'm liking this game. This is good. I, I don't always I don't always vibe I don't always vibe with card games. I'm a bit picky, but I kind of vibe with this one. Photographer. Birds of colors in their name. Oh, that's clever. That's a clever that's a clever optional objective. <laughs> I like that. There seems to be a good deal of depth here, especially with like these optional cards. Birds of a bird power. Just birds of a power, I guess. Two for bird. That could add up. Yeah, I'm gonna stop now, but this is really cool. This is a good game. I very much approve of this. Again, I don't always vibe with, uh... Can I, like, save my... Save? Okay, I don't know if I can, but... I really like this game. And I didn't even know if I would or not. I was honestly mostly interested in this game simply because it did look kind of pretty. And also because... Um, the developers of Wingspan are friends with the developers of Niche. You know, it's very fun. So, I had some interest because of that connection. And I see why they're connected, because they're both passionate devs that care about making quality products, which I always appreciate. Um, this is good. Wingspan is definitely a game I recommend, especially if you like card games. I'd say it's one of the better ones I've checked out. And it's it has a lot of complexities, but not so much that it's overwhelming. Um... At least I, I got into it pretty easily, and my brain doesn't always like to click with card games with a lot of mechanics or a lot of obf obfuscation or whatever. But this felt really clear and understandable. Um, yeah, I heavily recommend this game. A lot of fun. So uh, that was Wingspan.